Now we're going to do the budget. So, um, what is the budget number, Nathan? Uh, proposed budget twenty three thousand. Excuse me, twenty three million five hundred eighty five thousand four hundred and forty dollars. Thank you. And what is the default budget? Twenty three million three hundred eighty seven thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars. And what is the delta? Uh, the difference is one hundred and ninety eight thousand two hundred and fifty two dollars. Okay. Any questions on the budget? Mr. Walker. Yes. Uh, well, the total increase represents wait, the two, just under $200,000, right? So let, let me make some quick comments on this. And I'm, I originally was going to make some amendments. I'm not going to. But I have some comments I'm going to make. And, you know, for doing my homework. Um, on <coughs> December 4th, you came into this meeting. And I made a lot of discussion and questions about staffing and how we had given you the addition two years, and now we're looking at special ed, additional interventionist, custodian, mm -hmm. on and on and on. I asked that evening to your school board rep, to my left, and it's on TV, to go back to your board to see if somehow we could do some warrant articles. And why that's important? Because these are full-time positions now. And with everything going on, we don't seem to be going down. On December 11th, 17 mi minutes into your meeting after Chief Sawyer came in to talk about the school resource, or what, I forget what it was about. I think that's what it was about. Chairman Shepard wasn't even given the chance to finish his statement when he said, I would like to hear reports from my board on the committees. He looked at Mr. DeLuca and said, do you have a report, this is on TV, on the budget he wanted to finish and say committee. Okay? Mr. DeLuca's response, which I wrote down, was, quote, I would like to reserve comments on the budget in non-public. That's illegal. You can't do that. The, bu the public discussion on budgets, I was shocked of my longtime friend, Chairman Shepard, didn't catch him on that. Your comment, Chairman Shepard, was, okay, remind me later. So not only was the discussion, and I'm more concerned if the request that I have was brought up in non-public, that's even more of a concern that I have. The second concern well, I have hold is... Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Does anyone want to respond to that statement? We can accept it as a true statement then, yeah? Okay. Oh, that was a true statement. Okay, great. We're all agreed that that's a factually correct statement by Mr. Warburton. Please right proceed. off the TV. And the reason that's important, I want to be able, as I have through the years, you know, for somebody who has been a big part of this community and proposed and voted for budgets, be able to support a budget. And I've been a proponent of schools. However, like Mike Pluff with the town or me with the schools, or when we ask requests of people to kind of reconsider, the comment that you made to me after the meeting, when I asked you about it, you were like, no, we're not going to do anything about it. Well, okay, so that's fine, but I just want the public. No, 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 let me clarify. Well, wait a minute, let me finish on, first. Let me finish. Because if that's the case, then I, as the person I am, will go individually to each school board member on the phone this week and ask if you ever t brought that up. I'm going to stop it there. I just wanted to make that clear. But because of that, um, I'm going to go back again to what I said about the school, re uh, the school edition in 2017. And there were comments made at public hearings and meetings by the administration of school, even by the school board. And some of the members made points like, we are going to do our best, and we really need this, we need this addition, and we're going to do this and do that. The year after, I think you handed, uh, or, and I don't have the figures in front of me, gave back to, I don't know, 450000 This year is what, 200000 Okay. Two nine, yeah. So we hand back our money every year, so we mislead on that part. But the point is, that's important here is, there was no consideration given to us and even when asked about the budget committee reports, the comments and, and the attitude has been, oh, geez, we, uh, we've got to go to the budget committee. I mean, that's so much. That being said, here's my other issue. We have heard on many different occasions how important our kids are. Isn't it great? We love our kids. There's nobody here that doesn't love our kids. My two daughters graduated from these schools and went to Winnicott. I went to Catholic school. They had a great education. But then I hear we need this new position 
this FT 56,000. We need this interventionist, by the way, which is what happens when you fill a grant position for a year and you come back the next year and let's just, we, we need it. Um, just so that you know, when I hear comments made about me talking to people about who I've spoken to about school resource suffer, you all would be very surprised on this community who absolutely salutes me bringing up going against these positions. So all I'm saying is, you wouldn't be surprised. Actually, maybe you would. But the point is, where does it stop? Um, we have, when do kids help other kids? All I keep hearing is, we need a, a teacher for this. We need an aide for this. We need a psychologist for this. We need a guidance counselor for this. We need this to assist this. We need an aide in class six. And I, I'm going to end by saying this. Here's, here's the compliment I'll give to Mr. DeLuca and the school. Last night, I was actually excited. It was the first time I've heard the word teacher mentioned in a scenario about the early release programs, which he was right, and really thinking about our poor, our teachers, our teachers that need. Everything else is just more and more and more of administrative, full-time positions. And the only other thing I will add, for Mr. Zanoy's benefit, we were promised that SAU 21 we were going to save money when we got out. Please tell the public right now that the SAU 90 budget is way more than what SAU 21 was. That's all I'm going to say. I'm very disappointed in what, and it shows the respect that they, they don't have, and I've seen some of it tonight, towards somebody who's been on boards in this town for over 30 years. And I won't forget that. But I will tell you one thing. There's a lot of people in this community who you never hear from. A lot of parents of young kids in this community who agree with our philosophy and they want a good budget but they're just saying to themselves more and more and more and more um, I think this budget is again uh, I don't think it's going to be supported by many people two hundred thousand dollars less is the default budget than the proposed I don't see and I'm going to make one more statement I don't see anything that my friend David Moore and I when we were at Liberty Mutual I don't see anybody talking about process improvements or anything to look at an organization and to mention that the enrollment is going way down at the academy next year. So we don't hear about those things, but what we do hear is that we absolutely need these positions. I don't think very little discussion was done on them. If they were, if it was, it was done in a non-public, and I'm, I'm not for this. And I feel bad in one sense, because I believe in our schools and they do a great job, but I'm not for this budget. Anybody else? I'd like to make a comment. Mr. Morrow. Question brought up there. Do you have any, <clears throat> each year since I've been here, the taxes go up? So some years, not actually about 10 years ago, the taxes went down. That's right, it did. So 10 years ago. But generally speaking, taxes <coughs> going up. And when I was at Liberty, as an example, at Brian, uh, when he was there at the time, and I think he was, but anyway, when our managers of a department over about, you could have 100 people, 200 in your know, particular area. And the CIO said, this year, everybody gets cut 10% out of their budget. And you just lost 10%. You had to find, get rid of the fat, get, get rid of the people being whatever. Looking to more process improvement is, is really thing. Is there any way you could do things more efficiently and save money and actually get ahead of yourself? And every time we hit the 10%, nobody got fired. We cut the budget down. We cut the waste. I don't know what the heck the waste was, but maybe could have been going like this or that. Generic question, what do you have on your background skill sets that as you go forward, you're looking at things that might help to keep the budget down for the school system versus, see, because what happens here in Nate, we just raise the taxes for the taxpayer. Well, eventually some people are getting really a lot hurt. And some people are being forced out. With that being said, do you have any skills or processes you use to look for trying to eliminate fat or combine two things into one or cut around things? I, it, it's, a, it's a generic question. I'm just curious. Uh, of course we do. And I can give you a couple of examples. Because we're using technology now, okay, we're not buying textbooks. You can look in the budget. You can look at, at the line under in, in instruction in your budget book. And you'll see that those accounts have been reduced because we've been re relying on technology, which provides the kinds of support academically that the kids would need. 
for their instruction. That's one example. The second example is the, 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 that the board looks at, and we do too, it's part of our responsibility, we look at our staff, we look at enrollment, and we determine whether we need positions. And for the, for the last, every year, we have reduced positions. Now, this year we have a position on hold. We didn't fill it, we're not filling it, because we're not sure if we're gonna need it. And when, that, when we don't need it, the board has been adamant about returning that money via the fund balance. So those are two examples. So we look at enrollment, we look at our staffing patterns, but we are very sensitive to class size too, so we have to what meet. What are the class size averages? The class size averages around um, 17, 18 in the elementary schools. Kindergarten much lower. Mine kindergarten. was 35. Uh, I understand that, but that was. I don't know what century that was, but it was 35. Well, I'll, I'll I think let it was you. During the Civil I never had 35. Uh, let's, let's try to stay on this. Yeah, Dave, I won't respond to that. But I think 17 is great. Is yeah, um, and kindergarten is less. I'll, I, I'll say that. Up in the middle school, it's a little bit higher. Our numbers are, are 17, 18, and sixth grade, and in our seventh and eighth grade, 23. So the number is up a little bit higher. Even, even anywhere around 20 and below, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that class sizes are good. But we continue to look at that. And, in the, and every year for the last five years, and we haven't, we, we haven't um, no one's been uh, fired or lost their jobs. We've been able to repurpose via our retirements. And the other piece that we do is when we bring in new staff, we make every effort. We have. We, we have a, a, a line in our budget about how far we go to spend on a new staff person. So our goal isn't to um, go out and find a, a, a teacher that's eighty thousand dollars right off the right off the bat. So the the board sort of has this M five around 50, around fifty thousand dollars. So we we make efforts that way. Um, we 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 have used grants. <coughs> I I know that. We can argue about the importance of grants, but the grants that we do get, we use them. We've been able to reduce costs around things like um, professional development because we're able to use the federal grants to support teachers in their training, and that's critically important for us. We, we also knew that some of our teachers wanted to continue and get a master's degree or a, or a certificate of advanced graduate studies. And so we know that that was really expensive. There's only so much money you can put in the budget when you have 120 teachers times a course at UNH. Pretty, pretty expensive. We reached out to Southern New Hampshire University. We're getting graduate credits here in Hampton for about 10 of our teachers who are participating in a cohort for $675. So we've reduced that expenditure for course reimbursement. So when Nathan and I work with our building principals and our teachers, and I always talk, we always talk about our teachers because they're the most important things in our building, our teachers and our kids. So if anybody's not sure of that in terms of the position of us, I want to clarify that. But we do make those kinds of adjustments and we have year in and year out, David. Um, I, I could make, it's let also me make, important let me you guys make a actually couple. do not carry in an assigned fund balance. You basically don't, right? No, we have no, no, this we is never very did that. In the town. That's right. right. There, is a, uh, there was a law that passed oh, three or four years ago that would allow uh, um, the school districts to hold two? Uh, up to a maximum two and a half percent right. of the assessment. Right, and but the, our board has said no. Um, it, the monies that we don't use will return to the town, so we never held on to that money, so that goes back. But let me give you a couple other examples. Every year, um, Nathan goes through and looks at all of our benefit packages. I'm talking about life insurance, long-term disability, workers' comp, all of our liabilities and all of those kinds of insurance programs, and, and negotiates and barters and um, and to bring down those prices, and we've been able to do that. I, I, I will challenge anybody to, to, um, to uh, meet the, what we've done with health insurance. We have reduced over the last five years. If you look, our health insurance has gone down. This year, we were given a maximum increase of one and a half percent or something like that. Last year, we were given a maximum of two percent, and it went down to down 2.2. It went down 2.2. So we have had a significant decrease. And why? Because we did it, we put in a program of wellness for our teachers. And we have all kinds of activities. 
we send out emails about taking good care of yourself and don't forget to drink water and go to yoga and whatever, right? But it has paid off. It has paid off to the point where our health insurance premiums have dropped for our teachers and for our staff. I think that's the kind of thing. This year, we haven't finalized it yet because we're kind of waiting for those numbers, those hard numbers to come in. But we looked at our bus contract, all right? We haven't gone out to bid yet for our bus contract. But we know, based on all the numbers, we had all of our principals count kids' head counts on every single bus we run. And we know that we, we, we think we're going to be able to reduce our buses by another bus. That's 50 grand. So I, I, I know the costs are going up. But I, like you and like my household, costs are going up. I can't help it when I turn the heat up or the electricity that those costs go up. So, uh, David, I, I think that SAU 90 has done an extraordinary job at maintaining and keeping costs. And would you like to share with you that? I, I do. <coughs> We, we just make aggregate, and I, make, I'm, I, try to, I try to run a pro forma to look at multiple years to have a sense of where we're headed, and then I do a look back. Um, the, the bond payment, the debt service on the project is significant. But if the CPI that we use up here in the Northeast, which is a healthy CPI, you can pick, you know, CPI, there's any number of different metrics you can use, but the CPI in the Boston Brockton area, the, the Nashua, this New Hampshire realm, yeah, when, I can, when I compare that over, over the years that we've been doing this, with the exception of the bonds, so I've got to back out, it's $1.5 million you had to add for the bond payment, the debt service on this, on this project. If you back that out, our, our budget has run lower than the CPI has for these years. It's, and so it's a, it's a good metric. It, we, certainly, we certainly blow the metric away, obviously, when you add in the $1.5 million, because that is real money and it has to be raised and it's been part of what's what, what you know part of what we've done but um, we we you know we do we do try we do we, we do uh, go back and revisit and it's a there's there's a number of there's a number of um, a significant percentage of the pages that you might look at the, the accounts you look at um, our discretionary lines for this supply and this equipment and this in the aggregate, though, they're a really small percentage. So to Mr. Warburton's point, human capital is enormous. And so positions are significant because when you look at the total budget, it's a huge slice of the pie that is the humans and the, and the benefits related Is it to about it. like two-thirds normally? It's better than that. Yeah, 75, three-thirds. Really? Yeah. It's a pie chart here. I don't, I don't know if it's in there. Is it in there this year, Jerry? The like, important point in Dave's question was whether there were process and improvement methodologies in place and you have demonstrated there are systemic uh, processes in place that could address process improvement in a variety of areas and we don't need to list them all and we don't need to cross the T's and dot the I's on any one of them either um, but that does answer your question right David? Yes it does. Okay Thank is you. there any other questions? Great. Mr. Frank. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just point out a couple of things. I mean Mr. Warburton made it quite point in fact uh, two things. Number one, this increase that we look at of 198,000 is being driven by a couple of factors. Number one is the special ed. All right, our, our enrollment isn't dramatically dropping, Brian. It's been level for the last four or five years. There's been a substantial increase in special ed students in our system. The cost of providing services, which we are required to do so under federal law, we have to do it. Our pre-K program has increased dramatically. We discussed this yesterday. If you spent time looking at everything I discussed, okay, we're looking at ways to offset some of those costs. But regardless, most of those costs are being driven by special ed. The second phase of it. The, Kathleen noted is yes we are reducing the cost of transportation there is a piece in there for transportation okay which is a contractual obligation that we have to look at and we have to provide transportation to students now my final say is yes I did go into non-public because Brian I needed to tell the board that there was and I'll quote 
there was issues on your platform with the police department over certain issues that developed, and I was trying to keep a privacy situation from developing, okay, the delay, okay? I was trying to do the right thing, okay? Apparently, I may have erred, and I should have probably brought out all the issues and the grandstanding with the police department and everything else. My apologies. Okay, are uh, you done, Frank? Yes, done. Frank, it's, um, I think the point uh, on the public versus non-public sessions is that the public has a right to hear the deliberations, especially with regard to comments from other uh, public bodies. If you have criticism, I understand that. I understand. And, and I can assure you that there isn't any body uh, in this town that doesn't have a public criticism, even many private criticisms, to make of the budget committee. Okay. Where, after all, the one committee that is standing between, uh, you know, in front of the taxpayer, who doesn't have the opportunity to raise the tough questions uh, and suggest that the answer ought to be no. Everyone else is basically, oh, that sounds good, yeah, that sounds good, that sounds good. We are the only one. So naturally, we are the ones subject to constant criticism. Oh, and we don't, do we, Mr. Weber? And we do not take it personally. We're just trying to do our job. And, and we I recognize our that. job is, part of our job is to be abused in public. Oh, no. And <laughs> Frank, Frank, I have the floor. So while we enjoy being abused in the public, we don't necessarily welcome it. But it's far, far preferable to being abused privately and having to wonder if that's a knife in your back or a mere mosquito. So. No, no, I was referring uh, to. I but more importantly, Frank, Frank, I have the floor. More importantly, the public themselves needs to hear uh, a body criticizing whatever, especially another body. Shouldn't be taken into non public. Should not. Public needs to know if a body is not performing their function, it's subject to public discussion. And the voters have, have an opportunity to hear it and make their own judgments. Right? And, make, and so I think that is the, the, uh, the uh, pebble in the shoe, if you will, that, that Brian was highlighting. And it wasn't anything personal, as far as I could tell. And, and if it, can I, I don't think Mr. Warburton is trying to get personal on this. No, can I make uh, a Because comment? we're all professional here, aren't we, Mr. Warburton? We are, but this right. is a very critical piece, which even concerns me more. And I'm going to direct this, if I may, at the chairman in the audience. If you're telling me you went into non-public to talk about a letter that I was involved uh, with, that, wait a minute, you just said it. Time uh, out. Can I Brian has the floor. If okay. that's the case, you folks have stuff to worry about. And I need to know from right now tonight, that is absurd. We had already put that issue to bed. You no, just no, said, wait, wait, wait a minute, not that wait hold on, not you, Frank, that. you do not have the floor. Wait a minute, December 11th, that issue had been gone three weeks prior. This is the night we're talking about. You just stated, and I'll watch the replay, you just stated that you went into non-public and was trying to be I, nice to talk about the letter that no, came. No, I was. Wait a minute, you just, wait a minute, let me finish. You just said it. That is absolutely against the law, Frank. You have no right to talk about that with the school board in non-public, as he just said. I think we need to ask the, I, I need to see minutes of that meeting. That's oh. absolutely absurd. I'm surprised the chairman allowed it. Brian, are you all set? I'm done. I didn't bring up the law. But the point is, the point is well taken. Yes. You, know, you, you can only go into non-public under specific reasons. Yeah, that's, that's okay. criticism. I was unaware of and, that, and I was trying to take Frank, I have the floor. I was trying to Frank, I have the floor. Frank, you do not have the floor. So, if you're going to criticize another office holder or another body that has to be done by law, it cannot be done in a non-public session. It's just that simple. Frank, do you wish to have the floor? Yes. Then I you may have it. Criticize. I was trying to be benevolent and save embarrassment and bring out anything. If I erred, I apologize. Okay, okay? no problem. But uh, you know, I tried to do the right thing mm -hmm. without bringing anything else in general, but now, fine. Thank okay. you. Frank, I appreciate that, and, and I shouldn't have used the word criticism. I should have used the word to share observations or characterizations of other office holders or bodies, no, no. Okay? not necessarily criticisms. 
that goes, whether it's criticism or compliments, they both apply. Uh, Mrs. Zanoy, you want the floor? I think Regina had it yeah. before. I mean, am I supposed to raise my hand? I did this time. I know yeah. sometimes I don't, I guess, but. Um, you did. You did. Sorry. I want to just ask, go back to the budget, if we may. What a unique well, idea. Well, well, yeah, um, just, <laughs> may, may, Mr. Chairman, yes. may, may our chair speak on this issue? Because I, I think that, in all fairness to our board chair, I think he, he should be able to respond to Mr. W well, Wilkins I'll tell you what. If you, if you pick up your chair and put it right in front of that microphone, you'd be welcome to speak when you have the floor. <laughs> No, I assume you wanted to speak. Right. Open that door right behind you. It's just really, it gets down. You've got to force it, it's stuck. It's, it's all a part of the town hall security. Okay. Hi. Good evening. Les Shepard. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Les? Sorry, Chairperson of the Hammond School Board. Um, sometimes I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, okay? But we never in either public session or non-public session discussed any letter. There was never. You folks were in non-public session, and I think you could back me up on that. There was never a discussion. I just wanted to put Why did you say it to I don't know. I said well, hold on a second. We, first we of talked all, about a position. Yeah. First of all, Les cannot tell you what other people are thinking. Okay? So if you want to pose that question, pose it to the person who was doing the thinking, sure. namely Frank. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Les. There I appreciate that. Never. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Walburton, do you wish to ask Mr. Frank a question? Ask me. <laughs> well, <laughs> with all due respect to my friend, the chairman, I think we're skirting an issue that I find very serious, um, and it's on tape. You brought it up. I didn't bring it up. You said the non-public when I was asked about the budget portion of it. You think, and watch the replay. You said you referenced the letter that had nothing. No, no. To, wait a minute. Okay. You did. I said, said the, I talked about your position being advert, uh, being adversarial to the police department versus that. Why would that have anything? I didn't think reference about quote unquote particularly that because that was private. But private why does that have to be a non-public to talk about the police Because I thought, it was, I thought when I, we talk about personnel, oh, oh, personnel, we're getting off the we oh, no, we are, we're not. We are, we are, in fact, in my opinion, beating a dead horse here. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've already got acknowledgement that such conversations should not be held in a non-public. Right. Okay? And... No, we were told they weren't held. We've also been told that... Uh, there was an error in doing so by Mr. Frank. He apologized for that. All right? He recognizes that going forward, he'll have to make some improvements in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, 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 and Les is, is, is apparently uh, not encouraging uh, uh, inappropriate non-public discussions at his body. So uh, I think that's about as far as we're going to be able to go with it, don't you think, Brian? Maybe as far as you, what you're going to go to. Well, no, I think there's a body, as a body of committee, I as think this is about as far as we can go. As you, as an individual citizen, you can take it, you know, well, where I, you want. Well, I will contact the school administration because I want to see all the That's minutes. Probably and a good I will idea. talk to all the. Mm. I, I'm sorry, I don't believe Mr. Shepard either because this is sitting right here, and now he brought up, the, he mentioned the police department. Think about what you're saying. We're going to forgive after he's talking in non-public about something I said about. I didn't even say anything about the police department. The matter. Right, slow down, guys. I did not use the word forgive. Okay, I was just trying to characterize the whole, or summarize the whole conversation, because we've come to a natural end of it in this body at this time. All right. We ended this at the end. Uh, I'm sorry, but we ended this at the end of November, and I went through a lot and was very professional. And it was all done with. And then on December 11th, it's brought up in a non-public. I think it's a very serious violation. We can't just let yeah, it go. Yeah, yes, but we have, no, we have no enforcement authority in this area to begin with as a body. Now, I, un I understand what you're saying. I understand why you're sensitive to it. Okay, And as a citizen, I would encourage you to pursue it to the point where you feel satisfied. But this committee really cannot take it much further than we've already done in terms of discussing it. Okay? Uh, Regina, you had the floor? She has the floor, yes. Yes. 
please. So, uh, Frank explained that the 198,000 is mostly attributed to additional um, special education services you need to provide. I can give you the exact number. Yeah, that's fine. But is that do you, would you say that's the majority of the cost, Nathan? No, there's a janitorial ad too. There's a janitorial ad as well. The, okay. So, well. so the special education costs backs uh, are the, the basic yeah, drivers, the sig most significant drivers of the the total increase in the budget. <clears throat> that 198 is isn't really the special ed. It's it's salary salaries uh, increases for non-union workers. Uh, it's uh, the two positions that we're talking about: the Three child, positions. Th child and family interventionist and the custodian at the Hampton Academy, and it's um, an increase an increase in um, transportation costs um, and the benefits related to those salaries that tick up in that. Yeah, it's not just special ed. A special education added two hundred and fifty-three thousand six hundred dollars to the to the default budget because those are all mandated costs. So that's the majority IGs. of the four hundred and nine thousand. Yes. And these costs you have no control over because they're the special driven ed by. Costs, no. What four hundred nine thousand are you referring to? The default increase for four hundred nine five forty eight. Four hundred nine five forty eight. It's all specified here, right on this page. Right, but I just was asking him to clarify something. And also, if I could ask Kathleen Murphy a question. You had mentioned earlier about you had Homeland Security come in and mm -hmm. look at all the different schools. You said some of the things didn't cost money, but I'm sure some must have, correct? Right. There were items that they recommended that we um, do, and we've done some of those things. The costs were minimal and could come out of our operation budget. I mean, we would able, were able to handle that. So um, we did as much as we could. Um, and again, the board was, you know, very good about supporting the efforts around safety. So, um, okay. but those recommendations, yes, they did come from Homeland Security and from um, the group that came in prior to that, who also did a survey for us. So we did two levels of it. And what was the group prior? I'm sorry. The group prior to Homeland Security? Um, Ogons. Ogons. Ogons group. Ogons group. Uh, okay. They did some work in Portsmouth. They also did some work in Hampton. Okay. Yeah. All right, because I just want to make, I was actually just happened to be looking at the uh, 2019 proposed legislation yesterday afternoon, and there's going to be some help to some state bills coming that looks like they're going to, uh, if they pass, I mean, I know it's still very early stages, but one was about transportation, about, I guess, being able to use regular vehicles for transportation, of that sort of things for back and forth to school, things like that. Now, if these bills pass and if they come with additional cost, again, there still won't really be a choice. It's going to be automatically absorbed into the budget. It will have to be, correct? Well, right, but some of those bills could be considered unfunded mandates, and they, they don't, they're not always successful. But if, if there is something that goes into law, yes, we are required to follow it. I mean, we don't have any choice. Right, okay. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out, looking at the revenues, on the MS 24 September 2018, you recognized almost $380,000 of impact fee revenue, which you did not have in 1718. So that was able to help absorb all these additional costs that you incur. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I just wanted. This is annoying. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to clarify uh, a few things here statistically. From the year 2011 to tw uh, and 12 to, to, to the proposed uh, enrollment, we, we dropped 17.9% in people, students, from 2011 12 to uh, the projected uh, 219 20. We dropped 17.9% of our student body. Could you speak louder, sir? 17.9% oh, drop. Are you getting the microphone, Jerry? Yeah. Take that one. 17.9% Seven, drop in students from, from 11, 12 to uh, 19 and 20. Uh, from last year to this year, or from the last budget to this budget, we've dropped 2.4 percent. So there's a trend, that's for sure. It, and, 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 you know, I don't know where it's going when it, the whole state is experiencing. It's just not mm -hmm. SAU 90. Oh, the whole state is experiencing the drop off. Japan's experiencing it too. Um, and then, so 
basically, to me, we're looking at this and how it's, ex how it's explained. The bulk of the increase then is around two positions. The janitor position that is supposedly needed because of the addition that we put on with the gymnasium, which is a large gymnasium, which is a nice gymnasium, and that whole wing with the arts and the music and the auditorium, that whole business there. Uh, they apparently need a janitor to take care of that. And they need supposedly another special ed person uh, in their department. And uh, those, I think we should, if we focus our conversation on those two positions, we will be at whether or not we think they're needed or, or not. Because that's basically where the raises, that's where the incremental increase is. There's other things we can discuss, raises given to people and so on and so forth. But those are the two big items we should get at right now, I think. And I could just start off by saying that, uh, what does FTE stand for? Full-time employment. Full-time full full -time full -time employment. Full-time employment. Okay. employment. Forgive <laughs> yeah. me, I'm ancient, so. Uh, and I looked at, I'm looking at, uh, so I'm looking at page 2120-2. I think that's what it is. And. Jerry, would you repeat that page you're looking 21, at? 21, what is it, 20? Right, right here. Right oh, you're looking at these positions? Yeah, I was looking at the 1200-2. 1200-2 talks about these full-time employments and this guidance counselors. Every year. He's at 2120. 2120-2. <coughs> yes, sir. I'm looking at center school. Um, has got... Um, oh, he's looking at some yeah, I, I'm looking at... Uh, I see 15 full-time employee people yeah. here. Uh, between, uh, I'm looking at guidance councils right now, and I guess I don't understand the difference between There's 15 four. asking for, you've got 15 asking for 16 full-time employment people, FTEs, I guess, uh, in the special ed area, and you've got guidance counselors that are adding up to some number four, I think, right? One in center, one in Marston, and two in academy. And I, I guess I don't understand the difference between the guidance counselors and the FTEs that you're asking for here, especially with this increase, this incremental increase. Guidance council versus the town's family. Yeah. Okay. This uh, proposed so edition of the. Uh, of the uh, you, uh, to, uh, on that? Is there yeah. another question, yeah. Jerry? Go ahead. Yeah. You want me to? In, you yeah. want me to? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, Jerry, there is a difference in terms of their role responsibilities. They're all guidance counselors. The family counselor, family interventionist, is a counselor. She is doing the same work as our guidance counselors, except her area is more focused, and she's focused on, shaking our head, um, she's focused on youngsters who have experienced trauma. So she's working with youngsters who, for a variety of causes, have suffered significant trauma. And we know that trauma impacts student learning. Oh, yeah. Not only is she working with those students in school, she's also working, the reason we call it family is because she's working with families. She meets with the parents. She meets with the guardians or the, the grandparents in terms of helping the family. Because you know, a youngster is only gonna do as well as the support systems around around them, so um, that's part of her responsibility. And because we were uh, selected, um, one of six um, districts in the state, to be a part of a, tr a, a trauma grant, we, we began this journey last year. And part of her salary last year was paid for by the trauma grant. And um, when we came to the board in the spring, we expressed our concerns about the work and the need for that work. Jerry, we're seeing more and more youngsters with some severe mental health issues, um, kids who have been traumatized because of the opioid crises. So we needed to provide support for those youngsters um, while they're in school. In addition, Jerry, through the trauma grant, we've trained all of our teachers so that now they, they have a deeper understanding. You know, they understood what trauma was, but we provided them with n a number of hours um, to understand the impact of what trauma does to learning. You know, when a kid is traumatized and they've just dealt with something that 
happened and whatever that would be and all you have to do is read the local paper and you'll know um, we know that that will impact their learning and because of that we brought that position to the board asking for their support as a full-time again I think the issues around trauma and dealing with kids with mental health issues is huge right now and it's it's sort of the elephant on the table it's an area that we really haven't addressed we've had school counselors but they they you know they haven't been they don't get into some of the real difficult deep because they have a lot of kids on their caseload so her focus is her her work is very focused on these kids with trauma and she has kids in all three buildings and she also does some work right in the classrooms alongside with our teachers uh, doing some activities with our youngsters and I don't want to get into that but I could tell you all about the activities they do but, but I think this, that's over the one you're asking for for this budget period is for ex experimental learning program experiential no no that is the family interventionist that's part of the guidance but that's what you're asking for that's a different one yes yeah. I'm asking for that yes and that, that now, is, uh, the exp yeah. don't get confused because right. the family interventionist is one position, but the, um, the uh, experiential program are for some severe youngsters that we have been, frankly, out of district placements. So our special ed director proposed to bring a program inside Hampton Academy. We're not asking for another teacher we're going to be using one of the teachers that is already uh, on and employed at Hampton Academy. There is not an additional teacher. No, we're, no, we're adding one for that to, to yeah. build that program. Yeah, that's what, it we, says, what I we said earlier. Because we've got a backfill to replace that. Replace to that replace one. the special right. ed teacher. But we're, right. but we're, okay, but I'm we're, sorry, Jerry. I was wrong those, on that. I'm we're sorry. We're avoiding all those out of district tuition costs. That's what it was. Yeah. By, I'm sorry, Jerry. By, um, by this program, the experiential program, we're able to keep kids home in their home school and not put them out in out of district placements, and as you know, at a, at a significant cost. So that's how we kind of pay off that position by not having to spend those monies. I mean, we have youngsters that, you know, their tuition is over $100,000, and, yeah. and you know that from your yeah. experience yeah. on the board. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, you sorry for that. Can I make one quick? Mr. Walberg. Um, this is going back 15 years or more. All we hear every year, especially at costs going up, well, if that's the case, and you know what it's going to be, why do we continue to add? It can't be both ways. The, the, the record is proven in all this, and I will give Nate credit. Uh, these budgets are always well prepared, and I understand it. Every year we're going up in positions. We have another position. We need this position. That's position. And I want to make a comment earlier because, you know, everybody misinterpreted I said. When I talked about grants, I'm in favor of grants for some of the things you talked about they're going to take care of, but not for positions. Because you end up inheriting them, inheriting them, and that's not what we should be doing. So they're going to send them $200,000, and that sort of thing is not the only issue. The issue is FTEs, benefits, retirement, costs, and it's got to stop somewhere. And you've got to look at this budget next year or whatever, because it's obviously you'd say, what are we going to do to go backwards with financial numbers? And, and if we don't do that, we're going to be in deep trouble. We can't just keep throwing it, the special ed cost out and just saying, oh, well, I, I think what happens is you put the budget together, then you say, oh, gee, special ed went up, and gee, that's why it's too bad we can't change it now. We've got to do more thought press in this, put, put more thought press, process in this whole town. But I'm sorry, I, I cannot, um, with this huge addition we've got and all this other stuff going on, we can't keep adding more positions. And I'm, and I'm going to comment one quickly on the custodian. And Mike and I had a conversation about this. In a brand new building. Why don't we wait to see how it shakes out? See if we need it. May not need it. You know, the building's not even finished. The proposed, uh, and I've heard three different dates. I love it when I watch school board meetings. Everybody's afraid to say, oh, these are, I mean, is it August? Is it September? Or is it July? So let's say it's September on the, the, the high end. Why don't we wait until the building finishes to see if we need another position? Because you still need to clean bathrooms and you need to clean hallways and you need to sweep the gym floor and you need to do all of those things. You need to make sure that the outside area around the building is taken care of. You need somebody who's doing the field space. Brian, that you've added 40 
thousand square feet to that I building. I understand that, but you, look, you already you only have three guys on there at night. But you, you just can't expect. What do you do? Say, okay, tonight we're not going to clean that wait. bathroom. We'll do it another night. We'll wait till the building shakes out, and we'll in six months we'll clean the toilets. You can't do that, Brian. You need to have somebody in there cleaning the facility, making sure that it's absolutely up to par. And you have people in there every night. We have HYA in there tonight. We have HY in there, HYA that. in there all weekend. We have to go in and clean the locker rooms. We have to clean the toilets. We have to make sure that those things are done. So, and if, you know, and if that's the philosophy all over social media, when you were proposing the school district, you put it pictures, deplorable pictures, of the bathrooms during the day. The school proposed. They were deplorable, but they were clean. Well, Okay, they the were clean, Brian. They may not have been. They were antiquated, as a matter of I fact, say, just to use a word that we <laughs> seem to have bounced around tonight. Well, Brian, listen, I was they that were I old, <laughs> they were decrepit, and they needed to be replaced. Okay. But they were clean. No, they were. But here, is, here, here are where it stops with me. When does it stop, Kathleen? We, we keep hearing how everybody in the community is in favor of all this, how wonderful... Listen, I've lived here almost 40 years. I know how great this community is. But enough is enough. The taxpayers need a little break. Once in a while, say to the taxpayers, you know, gee, you know what? We're going to take a couple of years off, right? You'd be surprised how far that would go. But all we do is every single year we're up, 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 up. And I, and I go back to what I said when I hear percentages from all the boards. Well, it's only going up 2%. It's only going up 8%. Add it all up. We're all taxpayers here. This is a huge, and, and, and one uh, gentleman, and I'm going to end it here, and I said, Mr. Silberdick, and I respect very much. You realize that 7,000 home tax taxes that projecting in two or three years to go to 9,200, that could go to 12,000. Think about it. And, and, I mean, it's important because, as the chairman has said, we're not just talking about this budget. We're talking about the town tomorrow night. We've got some serious People uh, and, and go around town. The same families you're talking about, I could name 10 of them, because their house is for sale. It may not be for the reasons you think. So I have to, my role now is to look out, the committee I'm on now, and I've been on a selectman, as you know, is as a budget committee. And as Mr. Jones so eloquently said, we've got to send the budget to the taxpayers that we believe in, and I don't believe in this. I can't do it. We're not arguing that. that. You have every right, Brian, to take any <coughs> position you want on the oh, budget. I understand that. That's Thank not you. our argument. All I'm doing on behalf of the school board and behalf of our district is 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 um, supporting those positions for what we believe are the needs of the students in that school and our staff. So you, you know, I, I'm a, I accept your position. I'm not. I, you know, we're we'll go out the door tonight and we'll shake hands. Well, I don't know about well, that. Well, I don't but, know. Maybe I'll but think the about point, that. But, but, but all I'm saying is you have every right to do that. If you feel this budget isn't appropriate, fine. We disagree with you. That's the end of it. No, I understand well, Kathleen, that. I have to be honest with you. I was hoping. Well, you wouldn't be dishonest to me, would you? No, I wouldn't. Okay. okay. You know, all right. ask anybody. I speak all right. my mind all the time. You just said you were going to be honest. I was actually not hoping for a handshake. I was hoping for a kiss and a hug. No, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I am. As, <laughs> but as far as you know, um, I understand, and, and we're here to do the budgets. But what I find interesting, and the public needs to know this. If it's all on record, everything at your board means all five nothing. There's never discussion. I mean, I've heard more from Frank. Listen, I watch them all. What I'm saying is. <laughs> Understand where my point is <laughs> in the budget season. Oh, everybody in favor? Yep. Everybody in favor? Yep. I've heard more discussion by Mr. DeLuca here than I have at the school board meetings. And that's the point I'm trying to tell you. The perception in the community right now is that it's expected. You made a comment tonight said, oh, the school budget would probably pass anywhere. Something like that. Really? So just because it's the schools doesn't mean it's, it's going to pass. You understand right. that, right? But you also know that we have been very transparent. You, 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 we bring, we've brought in people. We've met with people. We've talked with PTA. We've, talked, we've met with the Rational Taxpayers Association. Every year, Nathan and I talk with them mm -hmm. because we're trying to inform people. We have been transparent about our budget. We've, we've passed out given information. So, you know, I, this, this, this budget, we're not hiding anything here, Brian. It's all out there. There isn't anything that anybody can't look at and know exactly. And if they have a question, Nathan and I are always available to answer those questions. And Jerry, you know that. 
Yeah, well, well I'm the only thing. Can I just add one more comment? Yeah, yeah, in, in, cool. in a minute. Kathleen, what she's saying is basically correct. The problem is that the Budget Committee has not spent in the past, and even this year, we've spent more time this year. But that's uh, not our fault. Kathleen, let me finish. <laughs> but you, 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 let me finish, Kathleen. Yeah, this year, the Budget Committee has spent more time in SA United than it has in previous years, but still not enough. Kathleen and Nathan are, in fact, transparent. If you ask them for information, they will get you the information. They do it pretty quickly. To some extent, the Budget Committee owns the fact that we haven't been asking a lot of questions and we're just beginning to. Okay? And I think, you know, maybe next year when you're chair. Uh, you'll, you'll see sure, a, I'll have the votes. You'll, you'll see a more robust uh, questioning than we have in the past. This year we're a little bit more than we had in the previous years. So everyone's under a process of improvement to some extent. Okay. Yeah. And that includes can, the budget can, committee. We're not perfect. Right. Okay. Can I, can, and I agree with you. And my, my last statement on this, and it goes to what I said to the, the selectmen as well. If this is all true, and, and I understand that you have to put stuff forward, I look at any new positions, much like the firefighters, the same with the school district. We hear about all these meetings you guys have and, and, and Concord, and we go here and you're shaking hands with this one. What a, I want that job. But why don't you have a forum where you have a public meeting? To a year or two before you want to add positions and see what the public thinks. You know, sit, I'm serious about that. Because we are at a crossroads where maybe the public doesn't believe that we need all these new positions. You know, and the scuttlebutt is that. So they get a warrant sent to them and say, oh, this and that. Much like I said 20 years ago, we should put a personnel line in the CIP, which the fire department knew about, so that we discuss for years to come in placeholder positions based on needs. And to Jerry's point and to Tim's point earlier, the enrollment has gone down. So you've got to be able to process and prove with the general public and say, because of this, we're going to do that. We may need this, but overall, we're helping you taxpayers. I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing is we need this, we need this, we need that. That's all I'm going to say. Well, you haven't kind of watched the budget, Brian. We exactly. have cut positions. We, on, ha we have cut positions, though. For the last years that we've been in this district, we have cut positions almost every year because of the enrollment. You know, you, you're making statements, but th there is fact. Why is the budget going up, then? Because the costs go up. Because an electricity <coughs> goes up. Because okay. supplies go Kathleen, up. Kathleen. Uh, may I, may I know try what, to help Tim, you out? I, I know you want to help me out, but I think it's only fair that the public, I this agree. is a public meeting, yeah. and I think that the public needs to hear both sides of the story, not just one I agree. view, and, I, and that's why I'm here, and that's I why Nathan but is I here. I want to affirm that what Kathleen said about having cut past positions is true. No, I understand there's, it. There's no question about it. And, and the fact, you know, that you observe that the public is not getting a sufficient, uh, view into the thinking processes of these decisions that are being made is something that is owned by the school board, it's something that's owned by the budget committee, something that's owned by our school management. It's not any one of us, it's rather all of us that are not doing the best that we could do. And we're doing a little better this year, and hopefully we'll do a little more better next year. A little more better. A really yeah. lousy grandma. <laughs> a little better next year. Uh, we get some much better for you next year. But can I give well, you I look for a little incremental improvements tend to be more sustained than large improvements too. So I, I generally look for incremental improvements. So, so what, can I just give you an example of tonight that I learned about and I took notes because we've always looked at our positions as they relate to instruction, 1100. Uh, special education, 1,200. So when David asked the question about uh, the how many Paris, they are in different spots because we have to follow Handbook 2, which is the state book for our budget, right? So when Nathan and I are evaluating, I can tell you that um, we spent uh, $609,000 on Paris, but I had to break it out by by their categories, by instruction, by special ed. But I've learned tonight that you want to have that information. It's mm -hmm. in here, but it isn't. It is. It hasn't been formatted. Uh, formatted the That's way the you would like it. And so now, now Nate and I know that. I mean, I, I I always thought that the budget committee didn't ask a lot of questions because they embraced our budget, quite frankly. 
Well, the rubber stamp. Right, right, hold on. No, the, they the embraced the it. Budget committee membership changes, as you know. Sure. And so the need for the information, the format of the information changes. Right, and we learned that. Where today. the budget committee has has been really terrible over the last several years at is not communicating to the various bodies that we have to work with in terms of what information we want and what format we want it in. Uh, we have legal authority to demand that. You Thank know, you. As a budget committee, but we don't exercise it and when we don't exercise it we we ought not to put the results on someone else for our own failings to um, to make those well, I'm demands. Totally agree with that. I mean our feelings I mean the budget committee as a whole and I'm talking about last year's budget committee the budget committee the year before that and the year before that etc not just this budget committee you get it as a committee you get into habits but we're not to blame totally no no we we all own it collectively that's the point I was making earlier. We all own it collectively. And Kathleen is getting a message, although we didn't state it explicitly, but she just said, said it explicitly that she implied that we want this format. And I think that's great. But I think it would be even greater if we as a committee, perhaps next year, maybe during the spring workshops, we actually get explicit in terms of what format we want and what data we want. I want so to remind you that we... Guesswork going on. I inv we've invited you to come over to the office. David's been over. Um, certainly Jerry's been over. You've been over. Brian, I've invited you over. And um, uh, Regina's been office? over. And uh, we, we sit down. We've spent hours sitting down because <coughs> we wanted to focus on yeah. well, that helps us to know what you want. We're right. not trying to hide anything here. But I'm trying to communicate to the next year's budget committee that uh, it would probably be a good idea so that everybody involved if the budget committee exercised their authority and said this is the kind of format, the kind of data we want it in, the kind of data we want, the format we want it in. Uh, that would, it would be very helpful. It would, it would actually pre prevent a lot of this miscommunication in terms of expectation versus uh, what's actually delivered. Uh, we can do things to make things better. I'm not saying that we own all of why it's not better now. I'm saying there are things that we can do to make things better. And we do have time limitations that we have to deal with here. So I, I hopefully we can bring this to a close soon. If there's just more. I have a couple of questions that I want to address. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions that Brian asked is about a maintenance personnel, <clears throat> and it is a brand new school. So the, uh, a couple of questions on that one, and then we talked about the bathrooms. I will tell you, I went for a personal tour with David, the principal of the junior high last year. It was just him and me. I was there for like two hours. He was fabulous, number one, great individual. But I will tell you, in reference to the men's room, I walked in. I've never been in such a pathetic bathroom in my entire life that stunk. So you're saying they're being cleaned all the time. They were maybe mm -hmm. old, mm -hmm. but it, 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 I Every night they're cleaned. They, they weren't then. That's all I'm saying is you're saying you you're don't really want me to get into why they stink. Okay. Do you want me to give uh, you a reason? Pipes or something? No, it's not bad pipes. It's the smell of urine that after 45 or 50 years gets into concrete and there's no way you can get it out. So you're right. They do have an odor to them and there's a reason for that. And the only way to get them is to blast concrete? them and that's what they did. How do they get into concrete to have whatever? I'm just going there. <laughs> Have you ever worked in a middle school? God, David, you're a man. You can figure that one out. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> Not like that. All the way to concrete. <laughs> All right. You don't have to. I, I just, well, well, sorry. You know what? I don't want to get. Okay. <laughs> Another question I have is, um, so the maintenance. And one of the things I heard you say, or whatever the other say, is like, I personally went through and knew that that school needed major improvements on many, many fronts. I went to the uh, science rooms and saw those things. I saw thick books hanging. I, I went to the subdivision down below, which you've gotten rid of and all that. At the same time, I would have to say, it wasn't just the improvements you did, but in a sense, like what I'm hearing, the basketball center is like a Taj Mahal. It's unbelievable. My point being, $20 million would have been sufficient, but it's $28 million. 26. Maybe 26 would have been okay, but it was whatever the number it's is. 26. 26. 26. I agree 28, but 26, that's fine. 
that's one of my points being, is if it's all new, but if you make it bigger, you're going to have to add more personnel. Yet, meanwhile, the enrollment over the last 10 years, as Jerry pointed out, has been going slowly inching down. Sure. So the question is, we're putting all that into something that's about anything. So I don't want to go back too much into time, but one of the reasons you got a million and a half bond and all this we have to pay is because would have been nice. We, did we have to do it? Yes. Did I vote for it? Yes. Did it have to be as nice as it is? Not necessarily so. Yeah, I'm just well, leaving it, there. It, I don't, but I don't I believe it's... a new maintenance person tr strongly because it, I would wait we until you start a new year and then see what you need. I think it's a good idea. It's brand new. Okay. Um, thank you. Anything okay, else? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Frank. Thanks. I, I just want to <coughs> add or, or try to clarify what Brian stated regarding uh, grants, okay? We take advantage of grants to help us help students, okay? And, you know, they may be a one-year grant, a two-year grant, a three-year grant, but when we put someone in, like, and let's just assume the interventionist, okay? It's there to benefit kids. When the grant goes away, we can't take those programs away from those kids. We still have to maintain those programs. That's why we do that. Okay. Okay. That's why. You bring up a point that needs to be clarified because there seems to be some confusion among certain selectmen as well. This budget committee is not opposed to grants. We do not hate Correct. grants. What we do get is suspicion when we hear grants. It's like, okay, the first thing we want to know is, Where's the strings? How well are they tied? And yeah. how long are they? That's right. Okay? Thank you. So we ask a lot of questions about grants, not because we don't like grants, but we know that there is often strings, both real and implied, like the ones that you just implied. They weren't they're not real. It's just like, well, we're given this benefit. We can't take it away now. So that's just a practical <laughs> political thing, isn't it? And so we say, well, we don't want to do this because we know two or three years down the road, we're going to have to pay the full boat, and we don't want to have to pay the full boat, so don't talk to me about grants. That is not a disparagement of grants. It's just the reality of them. So I want to um, thank you for the opportunity to clarify that point of view. Hopefully we're all set and ready to start dealing with the budget voting. Is that correct? Yes. Well, okay. I didn't make a point. I, Mr. Zanoy, you have the floor. Th this, this committee is being dominated by Brian, by Frank, and by Dave. Thank you. I'd like to make another point, if you don't mind. Okay. I, I want to make my point. Okay. There's 11 janitors right now between the three, three schools. We can't synergistically use those 11 to accommodate for the expansion we just got through. Or we're not quite through yet. I mean, that's my, that's my question. Is there any way we can use synergy here with three that are in Center and four that are in Marston and four that are in Hampton to synergistically, if you will, take advantage of these 11? and not have to add one over there in the new building as the budget goes on? Or do you have an argument that says you have to? So the first thing I would say is that of the number, the three of them are day custodians, right? So they're, they do some cleaning in the early morning shift when they open the building and they tack to some space, but their shift runs from 5.30, 6 o'clock until 2, 2 o'clock time. I have to look at them. I'd have to look at the schedule, but they're not really cleaning any significant space in the building. So take three out of that, and then we have two working nights at Center School, three working nights at the Academy, and three working nights. Did I do the math? Three, six, Can eight, you take so that let, me, let me be clear. He asked you if you could shift around the 11 to accommodate, yeah. and your answer is no, correct? Not as currently configured. Not as currently configured. The, the, estimates, the estimates that Keith is working with is that is that the additional space that the academy ought to have one and a half more than what we currently have I mean, as we operate the, the space in full. But, and, but it, yeah. and, and, we, and we said, basically we said what you suggested, which is there's no way we can ask or should ask for one and a half. Let's get in and see how we do first. But of course we said with one body because of the total square footage that has to be cleaned on a nightly basis, divided over three, guy, three individuals now. And, Potentially for credit. Why, why credit. can't we? Why can't we take a day and make them a nighter? Uh, uh, there's any number of things that they tackle during the day. Basically, it's cleaning up the 
cleaning up the spills of war, I guess, if you want to. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's bodily fluids, it's uh, sick kids, and things that, uh, that they have the training to tackle. Uh, they take deliveries, they help with that. I mean, there's a, I, I can pull the job description. I, they're some of the busiest people going. Um, and so moving, moving those folks to the, to the night shifts would leave them, would leave the buildings uncovered during the day. Thank you. <coughs> Jerry, all set? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I can accept that. I understand. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing is, we've got 15 full-time employees in the, you know, in the uh, special service area. Food. Special education. Oh, area. special. And uh, why can't we synergistically in involve those to accommodate for this extra effort that you're claiming you need for the? Uh, Jerry, because Jerry, because we have 169 students who have individual education plans, and as you know, those are de de designated by law, and they must be followed. And so we assign a case manager, and those numbers go anywhere from eight students to 15, depending on the number of hours that are delivered for that student. Some case manager might have 15 <coughs> because the student doesn't require as many hours. You have other case managers who might have eight on their caseload because they have very high-end students who need uh, attention every single day and probably for extended time, like an hour or two hours. So, Jerry, we looked at those numbers. I asked the director of special ed to look at all of those, and I feel that we are staffed properly. We just, here's a good example um, that, that uh, we could share. We, we just had a significant increase in our early uh, preschool program. Those are our three to five year olds who have been identified with special ed and by law we must service them. We jumped, we now have 20 kids in that program. We have one special education teacher. So instead of doing anything or asking the board for another position, we looked at what the caseloads were of the teachers at center school, the elementary teachers, and we, we took an hour from each, an hour, you know, we, we picked some time off of their day so that they could help with those preschoolers. We also asked the parents, do you need more time in the preschool or can you just come in for speech and language, OT or PT? So we did that, we increased the number of students, and remember, in that preschool program, as soon as you turn three, it could be, it could be November, you come to school. You don't, you, it's not like a school year. As you recall, that's how the preschool works. So that's why the numbers just all of a sudden jumped to, to 20. Thank you, Kathleen. You all set, Jerry? Yeah, for now, yeah. Okay. We've got to uh, deal with the budget warrant article and this budget warrant article, like the town's budget warrant article tomorrow night. We're going to be having two votes. One is the vote to move a particular number onto the Warren article. And the second vote will be to determine whether we recommend the voters vote for it. We clear on that? Okay. So right now. Could you please repeat that? Sure. Thank you. Nathan was kind enough to imply that we were going to put this number in the Warren article, but it's actually the Budget Committee's decision to put the number in the Warren article. Right. So we're going to make a vote to reflect that decision. Okay. Then we're going to make a vote to reflect to the voters whether we recommend that they pass the warrant okay. or not. Okay. Right. Thank, you. Thank you for that clarification. No now, uh, Nathan and Kathleen have, and the school board have proposed uh, a budget uh, for $23,585,440 uh, and I, I hear no, no amendments whatsoever so I assume that's a number we're going to move on, is that correct? Do I have a motion? Mr. Frank moves, we have a second from Mr. Ms. Barnes. And I'm sure there's no discussion because we've exhausted ourselves already, right? Okay, great. So uh, are we okay? The motion is to move that number that I just cited, $23,585,440, on to the budget article known as Article 1 on SAU 90. All those in favor, raise your hand. It's just to move it. Yeah. Just to put yeah. the number, on, put the, the number on the article. The, so second, the second one is going to be what we're... Whether we're recommended <laughs> or not. Right. Are you confused, Dave? You want yes. To? Okay. My question is... We have two jobs to do. One right, job uh, is... I heard the two jobs. Okay. But if you... I thought you could... I thought you could put the 23387 That's what I thought you were doing. So you were going to vote for either pick, pick A or B and then do the second part you were talking about. Right. 
that we, we only have authority on the first number, which is the proposed budget number. And we have to put the number in the Warren article. I understand that. That's the vote on the table presently. Do we put that number in the budget Warren article or What not? number now, Tim? $23,585,440. Okay. Okay. So we're all set on clear on what we're voting on now, right? And we're only voting to put that, that number in the Warren article. Everybody clear? Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Uh, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Pluff, Jones, and Mr. Frank. That is four. And those opposed? Uh, Mr. Warburton, Mr. Mora, Mr. Zanoy, three. So that is the number on your budget warrant article. Okay? Now we're going to vote uh, in terms of whether we recommend the voters pass the warrant article as a whole. The warrant article as a whole includes both the proposed budget and the default budget. Right. Do you understand that, David? It has both. Yeah. Yes, if you look at warrant article number one, you'll see it has two numbers in it. One is the proposed one, which is the one we just voted on, $23,585,440. The second number is the default budget for SAU name, $23,387,188. So now we're going to tell the voters whether we recommend they pass the Warren article, as it say, approve the proposed budget, or we're going to tell them, no, don't, don't vote for the pr proposed budget, vote for the, vote no and support the default budget. That's basically the question that is now on the table, okay? So, I have a motion to recommend by Mr. Frank, seconded by Mr. Pluff, yes, uh, to recommend this Warren article. Is there any discussion on recommending this Warren article as it is now written? Seeing none, all those in favor of recommending, please raise your hand. Ms. Barnes, Mr. Pluff, Mr. Frank. All those opposed? Mr. Zanoy, Mr. Warburton, and Mr. Mora. That sounds like a 3 3 tie, which leaves it up to your. Well, there's seven people here. Yeah, I know, so far it's a 3 3 tie. I just wanted to point out to that. It leaves it up to your loving chairman, and if I was going to get a hug and kiss, I'd be. <laughs> 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 but frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit torn. The delta between these two is like 200,000, so it's like, you know. What am I going to lose it if, if I just. If the default budget passes, what are we losing out on? Janitor and an FTE. Not necessarily. No. No. So you may have a, you may have, time. you know, that's a, that's, that's a function of the school board. The school board has a responsibility to set that budget. And they will, you know, obviously Nathan and I will do, make some recommendations, mm -hmm. but they will ultimately be responsible for setting um, where oh, those expenditures Absolutely. will be made. Yeah, so yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to go there any more than that. That's mm -hmm. the process. Okay. I'm going to vote not to recommend. I, I think that the difference is so small that you know, we can just keep the taxes down. That's what we're trying to do as much as possible. I think you can live inside the default budget comfortably enough. That's right. So I'm voting to not recommend. So that would be 3 4 0 on the tally. And I believe that is all there is on SAU 90. Is that correct? Thank you very much for coming in and help us out, uh, Nathan, Kathleen, and, and Les. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your help. It was a bit more of an ordeal this year, but did you uh, push back Mr. one Frank. of the articles? Pardon? Did you push back one of the articles? Yeah, we have Article Two. Are uh, you going to be getting us answers on, on the questions related to Article Two uh, for the morning email, and we will then uh, vote on it tomorrow night uh, with that. Just to you, the email to you. You can send it to me and I'll get it out to everybody, or you can send it to everybody as you prefer. I am not, you know, rigidly hierarchical. You can talk to everybody if you want to send it to everybody if you like, or send it to me and I'll dutifully send it to anybody else. I'd like to make a comment, Tim. Yes, Jerry? I'd just like to say that there is really, you know, a ground swell of people in the community here after paying their latest tax bills. Right. We see $10,000 a year very shortly. 
on an average family home. I'm not going to be able to pay a thousand dollars a month put away in escrow to pay taxes. So, you know, we're going to either have to sell or, or live with it and pay taxes. But th that, that's the there's the pressure there to to make do and and improve processes, and make do with what you have, and to try to keep a flat line. Thank you, that Jerry. takes work. Can I just add a closing comment? If you must, Mr. Weber. Jerry, you know how hard we work well, on I've that budget. I've heard a lot tonight, so it, I you know. should give me the privilege. I want to, uh, I'll tell you what makes me more excited now, and I want to compliment Jerry Zanoy and David Mora. The public doesn't realize how lucky we have two retired executives. And this gentleman to my right was Colesman's instrument for years, BAE, have dealt with millions of dollars of budgets and, re and very well respected in process improvements. Same with David Marr at Liberty Mutual. And the reason that's important is because we've got to have more people thinking out of the box, and it's not about throwing money at everything. And, and I think that's the message we sent tonight. And I just want to compliment, especially these two individuals, in their time in their life, and they're giving them their time. And I think we're very lucky in this community. We hear about all these other things we're lucky, but these two gentlemen, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed. We're all set. Thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate your help. We all appreciate the help. Okay, we got a couple of